Hello YouTube, it is Toy Adventures here again with some more figure reviews. And today guys, we got something pretty cool. Brand new, just released today. We are taking a look at the Jurassic World Dino Trackers Smash and Search Truck. So, this is from the brand new Dino Trackers kind of wave of Jurassic World toys. Uh, just like the new rebranding they did for the toy line. Adding Dino Trackers to the uh, end. And this is an extra cool release because what do we get? We get just a generic Jurassic World Jeep. It could be anyone's Jeep. It could just be a worker's Jeep. And then we just get a generic uh, worker to go along with it. A mercenary, if you will, or whatever they want to call him. He's, they're just generic guys. And what's perfect about this is they've been releasing stuff like the Jurassic Park Jeeps. Or maybe, um, you know, some off-brand Jeep from... Or some creation they've already made. Although they just haven't really had the best of, of luck with vehicles aside from the main Jurassic Park movie vehicles. You know, like the, uh, really it's the Jeep and the Ford Explorer. That were really the only two truly worthwhile vehicles in the wave right now. And this, I think, could be added right there. It's just a worker vehicle, so you can buy multiples of these. It's going to encourage people to buy multiples of these. These can be easily repainted to be like a G.I. Joe truck or an army truck. It's just a very useful set. It comes with a generic guy who looks like a soldier, a generic truck for uh, just working purposes, and then just a dinosaur to throw in to make, you know, to spice things up. So this is really a perfect release, in my opinion, uh, just because it fits everything I would want out of a toy. For Jurassic World, just, you know, cool vehicles to go with dinosaurs. They don't need to be iconic movie vehicles. They can just be cool vehicles to play with dinosaurs with. They don't need to be, you know, iconic. So, that, this thing is right up my alley. So, that little praise be aside, let's take a look at the actual toy here. So, starting off with the box art, of course, it is standard for the Dino Trackers line. You have blue and beta up there in the corner. This is meant for the desert, as you can see by the little icon up there. And uh, it just says, search and smash truck set. Comes with a Atrociraptor. Taking a look here at the back. Shows you everything that goes on. Smashing action, you can smash in the hood. You can put the giant dino tracking gear on the Atrociraptor and you can put it in the Jeep for transport. So there is plenty of play features to be had here with this little truck. So it's not just a boring old truck, even though that would have been just fine for me. They did add a few fun features to this truck like you usually see on Jurassic World or Jurassic Park uh, licensed cars just because you have to have that kind of destruction aspect to it because these are dinosaurs coming in to mess things up. And that's what these toys like to recreate. So, now that we've taken a look at the box, it's really nothing too much to take a look at. Let's bust this thing open. So, here we have everything you're gonna have out of the packaging. And to start us off, of course, there is the Jeep, there is the mercenary, his weapon, which I am assuming is just a trank rifle. It's really like a non-descriptive, non kind of just generic gun kind of weapon. Um, I don't know anything about Trank Rifles, so this might be an actual model. I don't know. But there's a good look at it. My camera doesn't want to focus, sorry. There we go. So just kind of a generic weapon. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a real weapon. Then we can take a look at the Mercenary himself. Uh, a little bit thinner than they usually are, which is pretty interesting. Looking pretty great. Pretty standard scope. These might be reuse in the legs. I'm not entirely sure, but this upper body is definitely new. Having a molded in little sidearm right there. Shame he couldn't have actually just given that to us. And then uh, not too much paint detail on this guy. He's pretty simple. Uh, the face is pretty nice. It's just androgynous enough that you could kind of get, the, get away with this being a woman or a man because I mean, you look at the lips, they do have that little bit of gloss, almost like lip gloss. And uh, I don't know, it just kind of has almost a feminine or a, uh, just an, like, like an androgynous looking face. So really you could use this for any gender, but I think it's supposed to be a guy. I'm just gonna assume it's supposed to be a guy, but it could also be a female just with her hair tucked up in the hat. So a great little figure with the uh, potential of being army built just as workers. That's one thing I love about this set is it's not descriptive. It's not pertaining to anything specific. It's just Mattel 
giving us a cool vehicle and a generic guy to be eaten by dinosaurs. And for the car, just a generic car to get tossed around by dinosaurs. It could be the hero car. It could be the car that gets destroyed by the hero car. It's really up to you. And those are the kind of figures I like so much where you are the ones who decide if it's significant or not. Those are always the fun entries because that's when you see the toy company really getting creative. So before we take a look on the actual vehicle, let's take a look at this little truss raptor. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've seen this guy a few times. Just a new paint deco. Pretty cool looking paint deco. Um, it's a little jarring on the eyes. It almost looks like this is all like a scar, all this red. Uh, but it's it's this off-white color right here. Kind of a creamish off-white with black little accents going up on the top of the back and around the eye. Followed up by these red markings here on the arms leading up to the neck and the bottom of the chin. So pretty interesting paint deco on this guy. Not really a whole lot of comment, but I mean, sculpt-wise, this is, I think, standard as the usual attack pack of Tyrosoraptor. So, nothing too crazy here. Just a new repaint, but it's another Tyrosoraptor to add to the horde that looks unique, so can't complain too much about that, right? It's always just fun to have a fun little pack of dinosaur. Now, well, first let's put on this little thing before we get onto the good stuff. I think it goes on like this. It goes over the head, yeah, there we go. So now our truss raptor is controlled. And now you do what they told you. And now you do what they told you. For the actual interesting part. I think the two best things about this set are the Merc and the vehicle, mostly this new vehicle. This is just a or indistinct kind of Jeep-ish looking vehicle. I don't know if this is based on a real model or anything, but it's just really nice. It has this overall silver color going throughout the entire body, uh, highlighted by these classic metallic Jurassic World blue uh, markings going throughout the side right here, this back little area, and uh, on this side, and a nice stripe here on the hood. Although the, the blue that is used for the damaged part of the hood does not match up with the blue right here on the stripe. You do have a nice little Jurassic World logo, but no Jurassic World, you know, it doesn't say Jurassic World on there, which is interesting when you really think about it. I mean, if they have the Atrociraptors, this is supposed to be set during Dominion, obviously. If there's Atrociraptors and, you know, during the packaging, so these are supposed to be tracking the dinosaurs, right? And, uh, well, usually if, you, if you've played at least uh, um, at Jurassic World Evolution 2, you know it's the, uh, the, the Fish and Wildlife, I think it's what they're called, uh, the Fish and Wildlife Department. They are the ones who, um, it might be the Department of Fish and Wildlife, I can't remember the name, but it's those guys, you know, they're domestic, uh, they're a real world faction. And so... Those are the trucks you kind of expect to get in this line, but instead you get a specific Jurassic World themed car. And in, in lore, Jurassic World is over, gone, a memory by now. So I think what they're doing is they're like, yeah, technically it's wrong, but you all want a Jurassic World vehicle to go with your Jurassic World dinosaurs, right? You don't care. And they're absolutely right. They couldn't be more correct. I am so happy they went with the Jurassic World branding rather than just like a Jeep or, or, or Fish and Wildlife. It would be cool and I still want one, but I think for their first just generic vehicle, this was the way to go. People have like Jurassic World displays with all the fences and whatnot, and they want just working vehicles that they don't have to customize a bunch to have them all nice uniform. This is a perfect, perfect little option. And so I'm very happy that they went this route and just gave us a Jurassic World vehicle. It doesn't matter if it makes sense. We just need a vehicle to manage our dinosaurs with and all the enclosures, right? So I'm very happy about the paint deco of this vehicle. It's pretty much exactly what we wanted. Just a nice worker's vehicle for Jurassic World since we already have the Jeep for Jurassic Park. And its features include this hood that can be smashed in like that. Something jumps on there and it breaks it in. And if you don't want to break it in, you can just kind of fix it back. It is a little tough to get it perfectly uh, fixed. Um, I, I kind of would have preferred removable pieces like the old Kenner stuff. But then again, that leads to it getting lost. But it also means it can be put together either. It, it, there's pros and cons to both. This is nice. But, um, you know, there's just other options. But I think this is just fine for what it is. Especially the way it's packaged, I think this is the best option. 
and you know what? Nothing gets lost this way. So if you find this, I don't know, 20 years time in a goodwill, it'll be complete. You know what I mean? You don't have to worry about finding other pieces. I don't think anything really comes off of this vehicle. Yeah. So, uh, doors open. That's actually surprisingly a big thing here. Uh, if you look at the vehicle I'm about to review, and uh, in, uh, I think tomorrow, the Risky Rescue with Ellie Sattler, the basic Jurassic Park Jeep, and its doors don't open. They don't open at all. Sure, it's, it's open top, so you can easily just fit the figures in there, but it doesn't matter. They, it, it, there's no reason to really not have opening doors. It's a basic feature of even tiny little matchbox cars. Uh, there's really no excuse. It's just lazy, lazy uh, engineering on uh, Mattel's part. And so this, that's why this one really stands out. It has opening doors. And uh, yeah, I just think that's very nice. And they're these cool kind of roll cage doors. Not really the fan, you know, the normal type. These look like they can take a real beating. This just looks like an outdoorsy, rough and tumble. There's a little Jurassic World logo. Rough and tumble type of a uh, vehicle. And I love that, it's perfect. The tires are plastic, not rubber, but that's totally fine. No issues here. And it's just accented by a dark gray for like around the lights here on the, um, up here. So overall, a very, very cool vehicle. I think a lot of people are going to be super happy with this. And I think people are going to buy at least two of these. Uh, a lot of people will just for that fun display because it comes with a generic guy that you can just toss in there. He's maybe just a Jurassic World worker or something. And he's going to go tend to a dinosaur. So he takes out his ranger vehicle and he goes and does that so i love vehicles like these where they're just like to fill out the to fill out your jurassic world display and i really hope they do more i hope they do the veterinary vehicle i hope they do the more uh you know i i, I call them product placement cars kind of like the mercedes and stuff that are in there i want all of it okay i want all the vehicles eventually i know it's going to take them a while but right now my biggest on my list is the rv from lost world i mean I adore that and I want it so bad. I don't see him doing it anytime soon, but, uh, you know, Mattel has been pretty much knocking off everything on our checklist one by one, so it's only a matter of time before they have to get to that, right? Right? They've done expensive stuff before uh, a man can dream. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do some size comparisons and then we'll wrap this review up. Now, I just went and picked three dinosaurs at random, so hopefully it is a fair showing of size at least so here it is with the standard mattel ankylosaurus using a bumpy here now to be fair the, the jurassic world ankylosaurus and triceratops are criminally undersized but uh for this toy lines ankylosaurus here's how it compares i think even the parasaurolophus is undersized but not to a more criminal extent like the triceratops and the ankylosaurus who are two species that have been very done dirty although for to be fair i think bumpy is the right size for bumpy this toy is accurate but for a, a, a standard ankylosaurus no and here is it is with a slightly bigger dinosaur the parasaurolophus from hammond collection aka the real star of the mattel license now I wouldn't blame you if you just stopped buying mainline stuff and just stuck to Hammond Collection, at least for the dinosaurs. Still get this kind of stuff with the cool vehicles and characters. And finally, of course, we gotta compare it to the T-Rex because that's what everybody's gonna put this thing against is the T-Rex, as you can see. <laughs> Mine's really low still. Hopefully they make a new mold for the buck where they kind of correct some of the mistakes of the past. Mattel is not too huge on correcting mistakes of the past. So there is how it scales in pretty nicely and very satisfyingly. This truck looks like it's about to be in for one very bad day. And before that happens, let's go ahead and wrap this review up. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Next review is going to be the Hammond Collection Ray Arnold and Robert Muldoon. Followed by the next time tomorrow is going to be the G.I. Joe Snake Eyes and uh, Snake Eyes and Timber, and the Risky Rescue. And then after that, we have G.I. Joe Bazooka from Classified Series. So the next three days, we got content coming. So stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for watching. And this has been Toy Adventures. Signing out. Peace.